Week three, it's done and dusted, and that means it is waiver time. Try and improve that team one player at a time. We break down the news, go through some injuries, and the players that we are targeting this week. Subscribe to this channel, like this video, and enjoy the show. Hey, Foot Clan, we want to thank Chime for supporting today's show. When your online checking account balance is running low, the last thing you need is a $33 overdraft fee. Look, they've gotten out of hand. In 2019, the traditional banks took $11 billion in overdraft fees. Chime does things differently. They are an award-winning app and debit card that has saved its members more than $10 billion in overdraft fees with SpotMe fee-free overdraft. Eligible members can overdraft up to $200 on debit card purchases and cash withdrawals with absolutely no fees. You deserve to have financial peace of mind. Join the millions of Americans already loving Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started today at Chime.com slash footballers. That's Chime.com slash footballers. Banking services provided by and debit card issued by the Bank Corp Bank or Stride Bank NA members FDIC. Spot me eligibility requirements apply. Overdraft only applies to debit card purchases and cash withdrawals. Limits start at $20 and may be increased up to $200 by Chime. Chime member overdraft fee savings based on eligible members' use of SpotMe versus $33 average overdraft fee. Overdraft fee data based on bank rate checking account survey and CRL 2020 June overdraft fees report. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway. Jason Moore and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's Waiver Day, Tuesday, September 28th. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Welcome into the show. Which one of you two stopped at the Starbucks? Was it Al or was it Jason on the way in? It was I. Ooh, take it easy. Not a sponsor. So you uh, you carried in a couple of drinks? I sure did. So you matched the Miles Sanders carry total of last night? That's right. He had one carry in his left. Mm. He had one carry in his right, and he <laughs> did outstanding work. Yeah, what is the average 13 and a half a carry on his two carries? Long at 24? Yeah, I mean... Uh, what a game for Miles Sanders. <laughs> Looked brilliant. Way to go, Eagles. Well, I figured we'd just get into it with some Monday night I love chatter. It. I mean, we have waivers today. We've I got love it. quarterback streamers. We've got where there's smoke, there's fire. But why not talk about the Cowboys and the Eagles and, I don't know, a game that probably had more garbage time in it than any game this year. It was a very strange game. The, I mean, it, starting with that, the, the two carries for Miles Sanders in – Look, I there were am, three carries to running backs in the entire game for the Eagles. That is not how you win football games. What a bad game plan. I am firmly on the side of establish the pass. Like, I, I'm i not the old school high T, let's run it down their throat every single time. Let's be, show them that we have way more body hair than they do. We're we're real men on this side. I think that that's, that's crap and doesn't win football games. But also, if you're only carrying the ball three times, like, you have no balance, and the other side, the defense is not scared of stopping the run at all? I would take it one step further and say, I don't care if you run the ball zero times, but you should do what's working. You know what I mean? Like, it just just watch watch the play, right. make adjustments, because the passing game was not, you know, anything special. I mean, at the end of the game, the, 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 the yardage numbers look okay, but that was not how the game went. This was a team that struggled um on offense the eagles looked bad and um sirianni not not off to an impressive start well i mean would you like to see what it looks like when you establish the run and then unlock your passing game because you can just flip to the other side where ezekiel elliott was 17 for 95 where tony pollard was 11 for 60 where the linebackers literally were cracking down to try to stop eight yard running plays and then anytime they threw the football they had the opportunity to hit their tight ends, to hit CeeDee Lamb. Like, they unlocked the formerly pretty good-looking Eagles defense now, by running the football. Let me ask you this. In recent memory, can you think of a, of a football game 
where 62 points were scored and almost all the fantasy players in this game were disappointing. Is that how you feel? Like, who was... Because I, I feel like... Ze I mean, Zeke was Zeke, outstanding. Zeke and Dak. Like, that's it. Ironically, Zeke barely <laughs> inched his way to the running back one on the week. We talked yesterday oh, got the, yeah. about... Where, where's the Dalton Schultz love? Come on now. Oh, that's true. That's true. Uh, Dalton Schultz. Six where's for the, 80 and two touchdowns. Zach Ertz gets in the pay dirt. Are you not happy? Goddard's was good last night. God, is that the Goddard, Goddard's was like 60 for like 117 with, with and one. With the Eagles and the, and the Cowboys, can we just all agree that you combine both of the players? Yeah, I mean, I don't even know how to feel about this Jalen Hurts situation because it was so disastrous, but they were into garbage time, you know, with seven minutes left in the third quarter. And then... That's a recipe for success. Now he, he, he threw for 326, had two touchdowns, two picks... Rushed I mean, for another thirty five. He was he was fine for fantasy, even though yes, yeah. he was. He he should have this. There matchup, should be a penalty though. Absolutely, <laughs> like a ten point penalty for for just for, sucking for just like throwing yucky balls all around the field. Um, yeah, but I mean, Mike, you couldn't have been. I mean, Devonta Smith three for twenty eight. Yeah, that's a big time bummer. Um, we'll talk about Schultz in the waiver part of today's show because he's been pretty darn good. And, uh, yeah, it was, I mean, what, what was the, to close the book on this game, obviously the Miles Sanders concern, let's just stay with the running backs. But the fact that this can happen is disappointing, but Zeke and Pollard, mm -hmm. you know, there was, uh, seemed like a stretch of like two series where Pollard was really involved. And then the rest was pretty much Zeke, um, three catches for Zeke. Yeah. yeah I mean, that was great to see. Zeke is the one on the field running more routes, more involved in the offense. Pollard is a very valuable weapon to this team and will be used. We talked about Pollard being someone that you could flex in who might be able to have good games like a like a poor man's cream hunt, and that's what he is. But that the winner of this backfield all season, not necessarily fantasy results, but the actual clear-cut uh, lead dog is, is, is Zeke. This is why we were saying to trade for him after week one, and he's – uh, I I think people are so terrified of Tony Pollard that they that they aren't willing to have Ezekiel Elliott be a very good fantasy back. Like they're just terrified, which is why I mean maybe not after last night, but you could have still traded for him uh, this whole week. Yeah, he was six inches from three touchdowns mm -hmm. last night because they ended up getting completely stopped on that drive with the touchdown that wasn't a touchdown by Dak. So the, the other thing that we need to bring up be, before brutal. we before we leave is still uh, need to put a chip in the football. I, I just don't understand why we can't do that. Unbelievable. That seems really easy to like. We have the technology to say whether that crossed the line. Maybe it's maybe it's money. Maybe they can't afford it. Maybe, no, maybe, that's not it. No, that's <laughs> not it. Uh, what about Amari Cooper? Huge disappointments back to back weeks. Obviously, he's playing out there with, I believe, cracked ribs is the is is what I saw. I mean, the. Does that excuse it? You know, three for 24 last week while he was kind of injured, left the field a little bit. Um, and then th this week, three for 26. I don't know if it excuses it completely, but 41 rushing attempts by the team and being ahead, playing from ahead, they didn't have to throw very often to the wide receivers. Yeah, th that's what I was kind of referring to. Of The game opens up with a 44-yard reception by CeeDee Lamb. You thought he got in, but he, he was down uh, short. And then he ends the, the game with 66 yards. Like, this was an explosion of points, but it didn't. Yeah. I, but the fantasy players, I mean, it doesn't help things when the DST scores on, on both sides. I, I would throw this name out. We were asked this morning in our company Slack uh, if you're a contender, are you willing to go trade for Allen Robinson mm. because it's been hard, or are we scared? And I think we, we kind of came to the conclusion a little scared. That quarterback offensive situation is a little scary, but Amari Cooper is a name I think. If you if you want to target someone that maybe the manager is a little disappointed in, he's going to have a better season. All right, let's move on. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Presented by Traeger Grills. All right. Where there's smoke, there's fire for week three. We're looking at some performances this week that, you know, they're not necessarily in the waiver category. They're more in like outlier thus far or trends that are beginning. And we want to know, is it going to hang around? 
Is this fire? Is this smoke? Odell Beckham Jr. Honestly, I was very impressed. Mm -hmm. He only played 64% of snaps. Ends up with nine targets. So I imagine your metric that you brought up earlier targets this year. Targets per route run. Targets per route run had to have been great for, for Beckham. Ends up five for 77 in a game that the Browns just handed the ball off. And so I'm pretty encouraged. And they're going to be on the road in Minnesota where Kirk Cousins is going to put up 300 plus. And I'm, I think it's fire. I think Beckham has some real flex to wide receiver two consistency coming his way. Yeah. I, I would say it has to be fire unless for some wow. reason, I know this is me what? speaking kindly of Odell Beckham, but the reality is, uh, Jarvis Landry's injury. I know Jarvis is a guy who's played through injuries forever. He, if he can get out there, he will, but I would expect him to miss another game. The matchup is great. Um, w do I think that this will just be him being the alpha every week, the rest of the season? No, but I think he looks healthy. He looked good enough. Um, and the I matchup thought he this looked week really physically well. Yeah. I mean, so unless we hear something negative about the knee, and Jarvis after is this on game, IR. Um. Right. So, he so he's definitely will missing two more. Miss uh, the game. Matt Nagy considers him questionable. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know how our IRB is just crazy. Um. Yeah. So uh, I I think it's fire with Odell Beckham. He he uh, he passed the eyeball test that we have been needing him to pass for a while. Just fire. He looked fantastic in nine targets immediately. Uh, it, it, when he's been on the field, Baker has gone to him. The connection is just strangely not been there for uh I mean I guess we don't really have a huge sample size because he missed so much of last year and was bad the first year but Odo Beckham looks like he still has juice and Baker looks like he has a command of this offense so this is fire to me when you brought up Matt Nagy I I, I thought you might have believed we were in the where there's smoke there's fired segment <laughs> oh, 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 oh man I'm giving that one an eight <laughs> All right, number two. <laughs> number two. Brandon Ayuk. Ayuk. And I'll be darned. He was out there. Played 86% of snaps, had six targets, had a touchdown. Just four for 37, but I don't care that much. I What I care about is him being out there as much as Debo. Um, they face Seattle this week, then Arizona. And I have to leave this in the smoke category. Ooh. Because the way I look at this segment is you know, what is the action you're taking with this player? And I don't think I'm willing to start Brandon Ayuk next week myself. I'm a little too fearful. Of, really? Against so Seattle? I, yeah, I mean, it's the embers are starting to crackle. This is not a – this is not saying I don't think he'll get there, but I'm not – look, you got to earn your fire, and one week is not going to, to get me there yet. Yeah, I, I would say I'm I'm hitting that super smoke button. Because, I, <laughs> I, you know, I, I get what you're saying. It's – it. He has not done enough, really, to say that the that there is fire. Um, but man, it's just it's billowing smoke. This is going to be a nice brisket. Um, but I would, st I, I'm, I'm on the other side where I would be willing to start Ayuk. What we've been waiting for, what I've been waiting for, is him to actually be out there. Him and Debo, you know, essentially playing the same snaps, being that one and two. That wasn't what it was week one and week two, but, you know, in in the beginning of that game, I think at halftime, all their... Um, Trent Sherfield had zero snaps. Yeah, all, all of Ayuk and Debo's snaps were identical on the field. If he's out there, um, you know, he's he's valuable. He's He has, right now, two yards after the catch, and he is actually extremely talented at yards after the catch. He just hasn't broken anything off. And he really should have had two touchdowns last week. Um, if you remember the, you know, there was a pass a little bit behind him um, in the end zone. Definitely think he should have caught the ball. Uh, not a gimme, but I would call it a drop. And uh, so against Seattle, if he's out there the same as Debo, I, I'm picking the talent and I would I would start him. Yeah, this is uh, fire for me for the situation that this is I think Ayuk is back to his full time role. It's gonna be a bit of a roulette between Ayuk, Debo, and George Kittle this week uh week three. That was a George Kittle game. And so moving forward, I don't I'm not calling Brandon Ayuk a wide receiver one, but he has 
the, the yards after catch that Jason mentioned, that will be unleashed at some point moving forward. So I think that he should go right into your flex position. Brandon Cooks. This guy. I mean, it's just fire. This guy. Well, it's NBA Jam's rules, yes, right? You, yeah, we don't have a, any choice here. We we would love to say smoke because look at the awful quarterback situation. I we got a boom shakalaka here. Yeah. Do we, do for we Brandon still have Cooks? one of those? I don't I'm know. sure we can find it. Boom shakalaka. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, this dude, three weeks in a row, the wide receiver 23, That's wide receiver fast. 11, wide receiver 13, on the, on the back of seven targets, 14 targets, 11 targets. You are not going to get touchdowns from Brandon Cooks very often. That, that's the only thing I'll say. Like I, I we're all in agreement about yeah, the you fire. Are, you are not going to get touchdowns from the Texans very often. Yes. Yes. But um, you know, he wasn't a top ten wide receiver any of those weeks, but he's going to be a must start for the rest of the season because you have to throw him the football. They don't have anybody. Yeah, and the egg is on my face for Brandon Cooks. I, I didn't want to draft him. But holy crap, this target volume, the air yard volume. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you sad. Why is that? Because I'm going to ask you, a man who drafted Allen Robinson very high, whether you'd rather have Allen Robinson or Brandon Cooks rest of season. I and you're going to answer I'm, Brandon Cooks. I don't want to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is sad. Uh, this, this is where, Foot Clan, listen, yeah. listen up. This is where you, you get to the point in the season where draft capital oh, yeah, it's done. doesn't matter you have to move on from what happened in the draft we do our best job to try to get it right and I think we get it right at least 60 percent of the time we 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 have uh, misses we have hits but it's about winning the bets more than we lose the bets and we get so enthralled in what we believed that it just is irrelevant now we have enough on the field real NFL games to where just throw out draft capital, use it to your advantage because it's really hard for people to uh, cut ties with that. Go look at ADP lists if you want and, and uh, you know, find the value on your team that was drafted high that's that you don't believe in and go get something for them from someone you, you do. Yeah, it's very important. All right, that was Where There's Smoke, There's Fire, presented by our friends at Traeger Grills. Put a Traeger wood pellet grill in your starting lineup. Make every game day more delicious. You can head to Traeger.com slash footballers to discover how simple wood-fired cooking can be. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Christian McCaffrey will not be placed on injured reserve with the hamstring injury. So okay, okay. If he was going to miss three games with certainty, he would be on injured reserve. That is that is absolutely true. Uh, we will talk about our expectation for him more when we're in the waiver wire talking about Chuba, but good news for now. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, Rob Gronkowski expected to play Sunday after the x-rays. Everyone's excited about Gronk and Brady returning to uh, Gronk, Foxborough. Gronk, Gronk, Gronk. I mean, well, Patriots fans are not. That's fair. Yeah, they, I, I I wonder if that's true, Mike. I, like I I get it. You're wanting to win. You're wanting. You know, it, it, it's a tough matchup. But if you're a Patriots fan, I can't imagine that many Patriots fans are not still Tom Brady fans. Oh, I know. That's like, not what I'm saying. They're excited for him. They're going to gonna lose this week, is what Mike's saying. Oh yes, yes they that are. is that is what I'm saying. They're trying to build this as like a real, you know, juggernaut matchup, and Mac Jones can't score enough points to make this game competitive. I feel like Patriots fans are rooting for Brady in this game. <laughs> like, maybe I'm wrong. Patriots fans, let me know. But I, I, I you know. Probably you, not. No, yeah, may, maybe not. I Probably rooting for his uh, replacement to take a step forward, hopefully, and give them another dynasty. Geo, day-to-day. -day. Kyle Shanahan said George Kittle has a sore calf. Day-to-day. -day. Okay. Uh, A.J. Brown. Oh, Hamstring injury week to week, according to Adam Schefter. I wouldn't expect him this week. No, very similar to Christian McCaffrey's situation. Juju Smith-Schuster, day-to-day after x-rays, came back negative on his ribs. That sounds like – there were some ri – ribs are getting beat up it this year. It was a real bad week for ribs. Um, <laughs> it really was. So, you know, hope I, I'm going to go get – some ribs, cook it on my Traeger. That's, a, that's <laughs> just just to, about. To like as, as like an honorary. This one's for you, Juju. Uh, and and I will <laughs> sacrifice that meat while I eat it. Um, and this is for everyone's ribs going forward. When Rob Gronkowski got got smashed, Jason walked outside and put a 
Mm-hmm. Put a rack on. <laughs> we'll baby back. Yeah, um, James White out indefin- indefinitely. This was. Uh, I don't know if we see him again this year, to be honest. Yeah, you 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 might not. I uh, I don't I don't think he's been put on the IR yet, but he certainly will, he be. will be. KJ Hamler ACL Ugh. tear. He's done for the year. Yeah, done. We- it could be longer than a year. It was not just a simple ACL. Uh, additional ligaments were damaged. So this is going to be a tough recovery, and r- really, that means like if you if you're in a dynasty league and you've got KJ Hamler, I would. I would I I I'm the type that I would view it as that that player's gone. He, I'm not saying he is. Just view it that way for the roster construction moving forward. Don't rely on him. It's probably a buy window for Noah Fant after the bad week. Um, they did go out and sign David Moore, but mm. you have it's going to be Cortland Sutton. It's going to be Tim Patrick, and it's going to yep. be Noah Fant for the majority of the pass catching. I would add I would add Cortland Sutton to that because he had the big week in week two, um, but he as a was, buy low, you mean? Yeah, as a buy low, he was. I bad. thought you were adding him to the list of of Andy already saying Cortland Sutton <laughs> to buy low. Did you say to buy Cortland Sutton low? No. Oh, okay. I'm That's confused what I was by saying. Mike as no, well. You you said you're like it's going to be Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick, and then Jason said. I'm going to add Cortland Sutton to that list. Oh, so, I see. Yes. No, yeah, I, I mean as a target like fan. <laughs> Got it. Getting a trade. T. Y. Hilton is making great progress. Not uh, expected to come off of IR. T. Y. Take your time, man. Michael Pittman. Have some Margos. Truther over there. Just relax. Pittman is taking care of business, my friend. You know the the Colts have to be the most dis- one of the most disappointing teams in football because they're sitting zero and three. I don't believe that they. I think they have played from behind more than any team in the entire NFL. Oof. There are there are different ways you could be three and zero and zero and three. Um, the Colts have looked bad in all in all situations. Yeah, I do. Uh, I do believe their defense will be all right this week, though, and they've been middle of the road so far. Josh Gordon signing with the Chiefs pra- right. with the Chiefs practice squad. Um, Come on, Josh. Doesn't matter for fantasy. No, it, no, it, it does. It matters not. for Josh the person, but yeah, not for fantasy. But- and then, of course, of uh, course. <laughs> Bears head coach Matt Nagy told reporters today that all three quarterbacks, Justin Fields, Nick Foles, and Andy Dalton, yeah! are considered uh, possible starts. I got, Nick- this, I got the seven of uh, diamonds over here. I knew you were going to get that card. <laughs> Lucky number seven <laughs> but, yeah, for Bears fans. This is so ridiculous. I don't care if in, like, I don't care if in Matt Nagy's heart he's, he is it's, like, believing this. Like it was so bad for Justin Fields, I have to decide: Am I going to put a banged up Andy Dalton, or I'm going to go to Nick Foles? You saw what Nick Foles can do for your team already, man. Why are you doing this? I have to imagine it's a that's clown like show. Dalton can't play, and then it's like a, I guess a production. To me, this is this is passing the buck. This is right. it's the quarterback's fault again, not my fault. Like, so I can uh, the the narrative of <clears throat> excuse me that if when when Andy Dalton comes back he, we 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 firmly said he only lost his job because he was hurt and when he comes back he's the guy but which is yeah I think it's gonna happen it and it could happen but the fact now after one horrifically bad game with your new franchise quarterback you're already like well Nick Foles might be starting next week you are a clown you are a clown. That, I don't have much yeah, I mean, to add to that. I mean, that's, <laughs> no, that's a them, good end of a sentence. Them <laughs> fighting words. But, uh, yeah, I, I think Nagy has uh, – he has shown that he is not a great coach. I don't I don't put him in, uh, in the category of, you know, worst coaches, Adam Gase coaches. He did take Trubisky to the playoffs twice. Um, but he's frustrating, and he certainly – and he passes the blame. He – you know, it's like he he's worried. I think about his job. I I believe coming into this season, he was the highest odds to be fired first of that, which surprised me because when you draft the you know a franchise rookie, you usually get some time. But uh, no, I mean, and the frustration is building for Bears fans. Clearly, pride seems to be an issue for Nagy. He gave up play calling for a little while, then took it right back. He's gone through these rotations of quarterbacks. He had no game plan in pos- in place, and and worse than no game plan is you had no adjustment at halftime. So it's you know you come out and and things go the wrong direction. 
all right, well, go into the half and then come up with three or four things that can work. You know, to to uh, Sirianni's credit last night, they they did make some adjustments that got the ball down the field a little bit. I mean, the yardage, pot, maybe it was all against prevent, but still, you, you have to make adjustments. And the adjustment was, yeah, again, pride probably. My game plan is the right game plan. My quarterback's not executing it. So it's his fault. We won't make a change. Roll yeah, it's frustration. Him out. Get and him for those on listening, the move. for those listening at uh, at home, not watching on YouTube, there are a lot of um, magicians playing cards all over the table. Thanks to you're. To, I mean, he gives you Matt a lot. Nagy. Look, that wasn't my fault, guys. No, you have an obligation. <laughs> all right, that was today's news and notes. Brought to you by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. Download the Sleeper app. Join that breaking alerts channel. And before we get into the waiver wire, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Omaha, Omaha! Steaks. We've already been talking about grilling. Mm. And when I'm grilling, it's Omaha time. You know, we got the Manning bros uh, on TV, and I'm doing my best Peyton Manning. Omaha! I put that meat on that grill. Oh, brother. And what dad doesn't like to grill, entertain, make memories Omaha, with Omaha Apple Tartlets! <laughs> make the memories apple tartlets with the too? family. Like if you want to keep that title of Grill Master, it's time to make great meals with Omaha Steaks this fall. Go to omahasteaks.com and enter the code FOOTBALLERS into the search bar and order the Deluxe Grill Out Assortment. It's got over 30 entrees you can share with the family, like bacon-wrapped filet mignon, uh, filet mignon burgers, boneless bork ch pork chops, <laughs> bork chops. Mm. Yeah, oh, I, think you, man. I think you got baby back ribs on the mind. Also, you can get ribs there too. Gourmet Franks, they've got it all. You're going to get 50% off plus 12 free burgers. Visit omahasteaks.com. Keyword footballers save over 50% when you order the deluxe grill out assortment. Plus, get free 12 free Omaha Steaks burgers. <laughs> Keyword pork chops. <laughs> and keep making memories with the ones you love. That's omahasteaks.com. Keyword footballers. And we want to thank Babbel. If you are traveling to a destination where you don't know the language, it can be challenging to accomplish even the simplest task. I remember going south of the border down here in Arizona and being lost, wishing, dreaming that I uh, spoke Spanish back in the day. Thankfully, there's Babbel, the number one selling language learning app. And through their bite-sized lessons, you'll learn new language skills that you can actually use in the real world. I have this. I can learn Spanish through bite-sized. Look, what's Spanish for bork chops? <laughs> for, for bork chops? That's like <laughs> that's like a name. It's still bork chops. Okay. Um, look, they have 15-minute lessons to make the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. And they don't have AI write their lessons plans. They have a hundred language experts putting scientifically proven lessons together and you could choose from 14 different languages including spanish french italian german they help you with your pronunciation with your accent and there are games videos stories even podcasts that will help you out right now when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription you'll get an additional three months for free that's six months for the price of three just go to babble.com and use the promo code footballers that's babble b-a-b-b-e-l.com code footballers babble Language for life. Put me in, coach. Oof. That was an eventful Judge Yamati. Time. I can't get over bork chops. I really can't. <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. Have you ever had uh, some bork some bork chops? No, they sound delicious. Those though. are a little thicker. You know, it's like you, can little, get, you can get you can get pork chops. Very gamey. Pork chops are all right, but if you really want to take it up a notch, you hit the bork, bork chops. <laughs> Oh, man. We're doing it live. Wide receiver waiver pickups. Well, the people want to know, can they drop Robbie Anderson? And man. the answer is no, no. you cannot. <clears throat> and and here is a, a ridiculous statement, but I do think, you know, Dan Arnold's been traded. Yeah. He was getting some targets downfield. That's got to open up a couple. And then the, you got a couple-week period here with no Christian McCaffrey. I don't think you – I don't think the team's going to prioritize – Chuba Hubbard the way they would prioritize McCaffrey. So Anderson is a, is the ultimate uh, buy like, low. Yeah. and buy, You can go trade nothing almost and get him from somebody that wants to drop him, free up their roster, and maybe it's your gain later on. Yeah, and I would, I would say that you can throw him in your flex right away. I know it's hard to play a player on the back of disappointment. You want to wait. You want to wait until, uh, okay, it, it comes to fruition. But the reality is if, if you wait and he scores that big touchdown, the next mm -hmm. game might be the one you play him and don't get it. 
All right. Uh, other drop candidates. Allen Robinson. No. No. Darnell Mooney. Yes. No. He's he's not a drop for me. No, you yet. just got to throw that game out. Yeah, they get the Lions next week. If if everything is terrible again against the Detroit sure. Lions, then you can go to what? What? Defcon? What is it? The higher number worse or lower number? Uh, Higher's worse. I yeah. So you can go to Defcon one if they're terrible against the Lions. But I guess Wait, I, I guess higher's worse. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. So why just Defcon one? Chicago's got to be a oh, Defcon was, four. Yeah, five. I, I did it backwards in my head. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I just to the the thing with Darnell Mooney is when I'm comparing him to the players we're talking about like do, would you drop Darnell Mooney for Emmanuel Sanders or these options that are on the waiver or Tim Patrick I would much rather have Emmanuel Sanders or Tim Patrick on my roster right now yeah I, I can agree with that that's fine yeah I mean you got it one of the things that I was talking about in the studio with Jason yesterday and at lunch was that like I don't know if it's just because there's the extra game but or maybe the way offenses are changing, but I feel like more than ever, you know, fantasy players need to look at the season in very small segments. Yes. And you need to realize that there is no set and forget. You can't like every single week is its own island of maneuvers and trades and, and waiver wire pickups. And you just try to pile up wins one week at a time. So no, I think you've persuaded me. If if Sanders or Patrick are sitting there mm -hmm. and I have to decide between what they showed people this past week and what's going on at quarterback in Chicago, you just need to move forward. And uh, so you're right. And then, um, you know, ha more heavily rostered, but Cole Beasley had 13 targets. They have Houston this week. And but, Yeah, go ahead. But, Andy, All you, right. you've got Diggs and you're telling me to get Sanders and – how can I do Cole Beasley as well? Oh, don't well, worry. We're going to tell you to pick up Dawson Knox, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you do that because, uh, Mr. Voice of Public Opinion, the Bills are the uh, the template that the Eagles were following of not needing a running game at all. So, uh, And it was very successful this past week. Yeah. You, I mean, you want those – outrageous offenses in fantasy um you want a team that can throw up 50 points and the bills are 50 the the, the bills are the chiefs of buffalo as i call them um <laughs> <laughs> so they can they can put up a ton of points and you want all the bills you can handle uh all the bills uh i still prefer sanders to beasley because i want downfield targets and i want touchdowns even and what if it's ppr still prefer sanders okay uh, from what I've seen the last two weeks, I you know you've got a budding romance, bromance between Allen and Sanders downfield. Sure. In fact, I it's to the point where you wonder if like Diggs was so ridiculously out of control last year that it was inevitable for him to come down a little bit in total targets and receptions. But like Jason, you're nodding as a Diggs manager. Are you seeing that ceiling come down, or yeah. is this just kind of a? I mean, start to the season. No, I, I, I think that the ceiling has come down because there is another target deep that can get open, that can stress the defense. And if you're the Bills and you're the defense on the other side is rolling towards digs, I mean, it, it will cause, you know, some of the yards to go Sanders way. You, you were missing John Brown yes. for the majority of last season when Stephon Diggs really went hamburglar. And so I, I think that Diggs' ceiling comes down a little bit. He's still the clear one. He's still going to be amazing. Um, I'm not worried about uh, Diggs at all other than to say he's not that number one well, fantasy wide receiver, uh, you know, the rest of the season. You said he is or isn't? Is not the wide receiver one. Well, and, and with what you had to invest with him, I mean, you talked about Jamar Chase's draft cost and the apology you had yesterday and then the unapology and the reapology. Uh, <laughs> but like Diggs may not pay off on the draft cost if he doesn't start uh, turning it up. Tim touchdowns. Patrick needs touchdowns. Tim Patrick is extremely interesting. He should be very consistent. Yes. You will never feel excited to put him in your lineup, but you should put him in there and just – Expect points. He has the chance to score every week. He had five, 98 yards last week, <laughs> I mean, and they didn't. They didn't have to throw the ball very much at all. No, they did not. Yeah, Fireball Jones here is getting <laughs> no respect. Uh, Tim Patrick should be rostered in 
85% of leagues. The data that we're looking at has him rostered in 37% of leagues. This is a guy who already has been good last year for fantasy. This isn't uh this isn't your wide receiver 1 or even your wide receiver 2, but this is a every week flex worthy start. He's a big boy out there can get the touchdowns and and will make an impact for fantasy. Should absolutely be rostered. Christian Kirk is rostered in 58% of leagues. He was dropped in a lot last week after Rondale Moore um, had the big week. Him and uh, A.J. Green put up about the same fantasy points. But through three weeks, Kirk has been solid. So, uh, you know, if you if you don't want – if you if you've sworn off A.J. Green and you don't want to mess around with snap counts with Rondale, you can probably put Kirk out there, always have a chance at a touchdown – uh, it is going to be a tough matchup this week to compound the decision-making in Arizona. They have the Rams on the road. Uh, I do expect them to be able to move the football, but it might be a little bit more of what you saw from the Buccaneers this past week, a great offense that was still underwhelming. Yeah, I, I think the Cardinals will be underwhelming, but when you add Jalen Ramsey to DeAndre Hopkins' injury, uh, I think Kirk probably has the best chance this week of being the – uh, you know, the, the shot you want to take on an ancillary piece for the Cardinals. There is a chance if I end up picking him up off of waivers that I had to start green, then more, and then Kirk. Oh, that's fun. In three straight weeks, and I just don't think it's going to end well. Uh, Hunter Renfro, six targets, five for 77 and a touchdown. Mm -hmm. It's more of a full PPR play because he's, you know, he, he – He's had over 70 yards twice, which is great, but he's not exactly the touchdown machine. But goodness gracious, I mean, he's a really good NFL wide receiver. So if he's going to have a baseline of, you know, six receptions, um, I, I like tough him. for me. He's, he's basically like a, a, a Cole Beasley with slightly fewer receptions and greater touchdown opportunity. Okay. I, I like that comparison. Brian Edwards. Five targets, three for 89. He just needs games to go into overtime. <laughs> that's the key. That's, that's when he gets into his final form. Yeah, that's tough to, to do every week. <laughs> Brian Edwards, to me, so he is he's available in most leagues. I have him in several leagues. And Do you he, ever want to play him? No. I, I Every week I, I question it. Every week I'm like, eh, he's in consideration, and I decide no. But he is like when we talk about drop candidates, I'm going, I'm not dropping him. But yeah. I can't play him. So he's like a purgatory player. Purgatory player. Yeah. Yeah, it does feel that way. You're kind of um you're praying when you put him in the lineup that you get a deep play. A deep like would you play Renfro in the flex or Brian Edwards in the flex the rest of the season in a half PPR? Uh, or would you rather have locked in if you had I to? I would rather have Renfro locked in as a known commodity. But I, I think I would probably play rugs. Uh, ahead of both of them. That being said, he's probably not available on waivers. Other guys to be aware of that you want to bring up? I mean, just is it time f to stash Curtis Samuel uh, of Washington? And even then, you can, if we're looking at that time period, like because uh, he was on Curtis Samuel was put on the he's, IR. He's eligible to come back this week, so he's eligible to come back. And we haven't seen. I mean, Logan Logan Thomas has been fine, uh, but there hasn't been. Uh, like a, a real number two for, for Washington. Deami Brown hasn't stepped up into that role as a rookie yet. He's the one, you know, getting a bunch of snaps, but he's not seeing a, a ton of opportunity. And then I would just combo that because it's the same type of a situation. Uh, Rashad Bateman for the Baltimore Ravens, their first round rookie wide receiver selection, who unfortunately had an had a injury, had to get surgery over the offseason or in that training camp. He should be coming back soon as well. Do, which one would you prefer to Neither. stash? Neither? No, okay. I don't really want to mess around with Curtis Samuel, with Taylor Heineke, and with what I've seen from Logan Thomas. Dude, and, Heineke's slinging it, man. He gets after uh, it. I, I mean, it's just me, just my opinion. Yeah, I, I, I worry about still the injury. It, it's worth bringing the name up to know that he is eligible. If you want to call your shot, um, he could play this week. But the injury combined with Heineke, I am 
probably the other names that we've brought up. I would I would rather take a shot on. But okay. speaking as the real number two that you brought up, did mm -hmm. you guys see Jalen Hurts' quote about last night's game? <laughs> yes. Oh no! It's yes. Great. Was it? A, did it have to do with the number two? It did. It said you. His here's his quote: "You take a deuce. You don't sit there and look at it. You <laughs> flush it and move on. <laughs> We're gonna flush it and move on, which is the right approach, Jalen. I love it. Good for you. At least you know that it was." Kaka. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it happens. It happens. Running back waiver pickups. Oh, it's thin. It's thin on the waiver wire for running backs. I mean, everyone's going to compete if he wasn't already picked up like he was in our league of records. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So I went. You would have bid everything. I went. Well, the, even before the week, I went to pick him up. Um, <laughs> I did. And I went a day late. <laughs> One day late to pick him up prior to the week. I'm, I'm the Christian McCaffrey manager in our league of record, and I saw he was on Andy's team, and I literally thought, well, I'll just pick him up next week after he drops him. How uh, hard do you go after Chuba? Well, so here's my take on Chuba. Chuba should go to the CMC manager in almost every situation because if I'm not the CMC manager or someone that's absolutely injury-riddled, desperate for a play – I don't look at Chuba as someone I'm spending all my capital on. I look at him as, you know, 25, 35%. That's fine. You're going to get a little bit of play. Uh, Matt DeSorbo, one of our writers, looked since 2015. Backups make more than one start in a season just 41% of the time, more than two starts just 32% of the time, and those starts average 10 fantasy points per game. So this isn't like a must. you got to grab him. But the opportunity is there. So the way that I look at it is if I'm the Christian McCaffrey manager, I'm willing to pay half my budget. Oh, more than that. Or, or, or more. I more mean, than that for re-injury risk rest of season and having that, yeah, I'd go I'd go 80%. Sure. I mean, my, my point is you got to get him. you got to have him. And if I'm not the Christian McCaffrey manager, I don't think I want to take that shot. If he's not absolutely necessary to you this week, you probably just let that CMC manager. I mean, if you're playing against the CMC manager, okay, okay, yeah. maybe you play keep away and you get a twofer. I think I'd go a little bit harder than you're talking about, Jay. Dallas and then Philadelphia, and I think that Chuba Hubbard can. I mean, Andy just said it. You have to. You're trying to buy wins a week at a time, just a chunk at a time, and Hubbard, at least what they showed us from this past week, he's going to be the primary guy. Royce Freeman is still around and honestly uh, I don't think we have him on the list but I think in a little bit of a deeper league Royce Freeman just put like a one a two dollar whatever try and just sneak him on the back of your bench and see what happens see if it really is Chuba being a 65 percent guy or maybe it ends up being 50 50 after that's what they game plan there's two there's two things I think that matter here I, I agree with Jason Cinnamon if if the CMC manager should end up with him and then take a look at your roster. Do you need a flex start for the next two weeks? I think Chuba Hubbard will be flexible for two weeks. Yes. What and if you've been counting on Tyson Williams as your running back too? I would play Chuba over him. That's what I mean. So like Yeah. So if you're if you're in that boat, now the other thing to consider that I wanted to say was just that there are players that may have a longer shelf life. Like okay. if Cordero's still out there, it seems like he's going to be a part of the offense for the whole season. And so you may want him out there, and you may want to invest in him more than Chuba Hubbard. The way that I look at Cordero Patterson is coming into the season, there were people who really believed in Mike Davis as the every down workhorse role, um, and he's stolen a piece of it. He's he's behind him. And then there were uh, there was uh, all the Russell Gage, the talk about him being really, really uh, valuable in the passing game. Now the Julio's gone. He's stolen a lot of that. And then there's Kyle Pitts, rookie sensation, going to light the world on fire and have over 1,000 yards, and, and he's stolen a piece of that. And you take all that, and all of a sudden you go, this is a pretty good fantasy option right. in Cordero Patterson. Uh, he's certainly um, – uh, I would uh, – I, I went and tried to kick the tires in a trade last night for Cordero as the CMC manager who cannot get Chuba. Would you rather have – let's say they're both there, and this is – you know, both of these guys are only available in like 30, 35% of leagues. Would you rather go after Cordero Patterson or would you rather go after Zach Moss? I would rather go after Cordero Patterson. I, I think that um, 
we brought up uh, Zach Moss is is certainly a, a pickup if he's out there on your waiver wire. He's had two back to back weeks. He actually um, nice matchup against Houston. Out, I would out, go Zach Moss. Out touched uh, Devin Singletary, but he is still um, in a timeshare and they in a in a timeshare that doesn't want to run the ball. They have had a little bit of success so far this year. If that continues, great. Um, but obviously, we just brought up. You Diggs and Emmanuel Sanders and yep. Cole Beasley this is a passing team when you split the running backs in half um and you know the touchdowns make it valuable and there's been touchdowns to the running back so far I just don't think that's going to stick other names to throw out there you know Sonny Michelle I wouldn't heavily invest unless you were the Daryl Henderson manager because he could be back this week but uh you know Zach Moss was brought up Naeem Hines Continues to contribute, uh, but mostly rostered. Latavius Murray, mostly rostered. Kenneth Gainwell is, I mean, very difficult to really make a compelling case for. He was barely used last night. And so, you know, that's a stash, not a play this week. And then Peyton Barber, That the, the hard part about Peyton Barber, I'm going to just lay it out there for you right now on Tuesday. It's the Monday night football game against the Chargers. And so if you are going to have a song and dance with Josh Jacobs availability, which went right down to the wire this past week, you better have a backup plan. So if it, if you have Josh Jacobs, go grab Peyton Barber. If you have, I mean, I just don't know what the pivot is on a Monday night football when it comes to, you know, Eckler's going to be rostered. and Yeah, you're you're 100% right. The Peyton Barber is, is the guy who should be rostered for Josh Jacob managers and and that's the situation where you can be confident. Otherwise, this could be one hit wonder for Peyton Barber. Yes, you can't possibly put him in your lineup, but he is proof positive uh in the camp of running backs don't matter because yeah. you go out you pay 11 million dollars for Kenyon Drake um and a first round pick wide for, receiver Kenyon Drake. Yeah, and a and a first round pick on Josh Jacobs and it's like oh, let's just bring this guy in off the street cut off of uh you know Another team, and I, I think that Barber is still a a good speculation ad from a, one. You already have proof of concept that two weeks in a row now that Peyton Barber was the was the guy that that John Gruden went to when in the absence of Josh Jacobs. We don't know if Jacobs is going to be okay this week to play, but we know that he has been banged up, you know, multiple times throughout his career, and who. Maybe Monday Josh Jacobs plays and he goes out there and boom, the toe is already a problem, re-aggravated, and now he misses a couple games. So I think that people aren't excited to get Peyton Barber. You sh probably sh shouldn't be really excited about it. But the way that running backs, the way that the running back landscape is right now, I think Barber is a good stash even if you're not intending to play him this week. And it's not a great week for waiver running backs. Right. In fact, every single player that we've mentioned so far – could already be rostered in your league but there are uh, there is one backfield that if you're in desperate need oh man has want to be sneaky an opening and that is the new england patriots we talked about it in the news james white who was very very relevant very yes. used used in the passing game had a rushing touchdown is out and out for a while indefinitely so you have to make the decision between ramondre stevenson and jj taylor here's how i view these two backs um they really like both backs uh they both looked good in preseason Ramondre Stevenson is the more talented running back if you want to take the shot on talent I would take it on Ramondre Stevenson he tore up preseason came in week one and immediately was in the game um like first drive I think fumbled and then has been Baxter punted off the bridge, has not seen anything since that fumble, uh, hardcore benched. Uh, J.J. Taylor is the more James White role, the guy that is a really good pass-catching back, has not done much of anything so far in his career, but has the talent to succeed in that role. Um, so it's just a matter of, do you want to go with the more talented Ramondre Stevenson? This is his opportunity to be forgiven for the fumble, or Bill Belichick against Tom Brady in what he views as, man, I want to win this thing. Can is he going to trust the guy who he has a fear of fumbling? Um, I, 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 to me, they're just both long-term stashes. Not, I mean, Brandon Bolden is going to play. He was and the one. Damian who took Harris over. is going to play, and so then it's like, 
you're at the bottom of a barrel here. It's not like Ramondre is getting first and second downs. Yeah, you're probably not starting any either of these guys. And if you're not starting them this week, then it would be Ramondre Stevenson is the player that I would pick up. Hope he uh, gets out of the doghouse due to injury and and dominates because I I think he can. Tight end waiver pickups. Tight end always tough in the streets. You can drop Johnny Smith and I think move forward trying to find a better solution there. Would you drop Jared Cook after two disappointing weeks? For some of these guys, this is actually a good waiver wire week for tight end. All right, do you believe in Tyler Conklin? Seven for 70 and a touchdown, 72% of snaps. Um, he looked great. It's it's interesting because like, my, my brain immediately wants to go to the narrative. Well, Dalvin Cook was out, so you know some of those check downs, they just went to Tyler Conklin, except Alexander Madison was heavily used in can the I, passing game. Can I make one quick argument? To sure. help you decide? Sure. Conk, conk, conk. Oh, man. Pick oh. him up. Conk. Pick him up. Yeah, I, I He's I the best it. pick up this week. I, uh, <laughs> I uh, of the best, you know, I would say Evan Ingram is that, that's more where I'm likely trying to, to see targets. Uh, Evan Ingram, also uh, a talented. From uh, the New York end. Giants. <laughs> yes, Evan Talented, Ingram. just, that's all you can say. Well, no. Nope. That's all you can say no, about Evan can, Ingram. Now you can say there is opportunity because yes. Sterling Shepard is hurt and Darius Slayton is hurt. So they and Kenny Galladay is still not a hundred percent. They need Evan Ingram on the field. He'll he'll see four four plus. Targets. No, he'll see more than that. Four You're, plus. My okay, that's fair. I can't <laughs> I can't say that you didn't uh, agree with that. <laughs> four plus. I think Evan Ingram ends up with a stat line of ten or eleven targets for four receptions <laughs> um you know i i would i think i would go with evan ingram over conklin um but those are the two guys I that i would know pivot that to you just said i'm going daniel jones over kirk cousins yeah i know i know okay yeah i mean it i just look at last year he had 109 targets you were happy that you started him four out of 17 or 16 weeks i guess i'm done mentally with it, I uh, love to hear I want, it because I've been anti. I would Evan rather, Ingram. I would ra rather than bet on something that never can materialize for Evan Ingram. I'd rather bet on something new materializing for Tyler Conklin, or I'd rather bet on like Mike Gesicki. You know, Mike Gesicki had twelve targets in this game. Run the second most routes at tight end in week three, and this was obviously a completely new game plan built for not having Tua. So you could see it again. And then Dawson Knox was Dawson. Yeah, he's uh, it's all right. yeah, not really. It's I'm more not, of like a three. Yeah, I don't like it. And he's been, <laughs> like, I mean, two weeks in a row with uh, with a touchdown. You go back to the end of last year. He's a touchdown he was, gamble. It was pretty strong. And and if you want to make a gamble on a touchdown, why not? I'd like to have Josh Allen as that quarterback. It's like Robert Tunyon. He's not yes. a guy that's gonna you. You're taking a bet on Aaron Rodgers throwing a bunch of touchdowns. Um, that's what Dawson Knox is. What about the tight end one in Dallas? Yeah. Dalton Schultz with the number one overall week at the tight end position. 69% uh, of snaps. That's where he's been hanging out. It's pretty nice. I would say that um, you saw week one, he was ahead of Jarwin. Week two, Jarwin was ahead of him. Week three, obviously, uh, Schultz, uh, Schultz it's dominated. It's not really a fun game to play, is it's it? It's not. I just don't. It's It's tough when you're... When you're splitting, it's it's Dallas Goddard and Zach Ertz. When you're splitting tight ends, man, it's gross. I mean, Jonu Smith is good. Hunter Henry is good. Neither of them are even fathomable to roster or play because they're splitting Too tight end targets. Too good to make a gross. The two most ridiculous plays on film this past week were Big Ben falling <laughs> over, <laughs> yes. trip, tripping over nothing, and then Jonu and Smith... <laughs> Causing an interception by it, basically the ball hit him and it looked like he exploded. And he, went, ah, 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 and he threw I the ball. See this he threw ball. the ball oh, man, straight up into the air for a pick six. It's so fantastic. It, it was just like a, a stumbling, <laughs> bumbling type of play. Like the, uh, it reminded me. It of, looked like an infomercial or the uh, the gif of the woman who falls with the popcorn. Yes, I mean like the popcorn explodes explodes out of her hands. Uh, I want to get into our streaming quarterbacks. I'm just going to read off some defenses you can look at this week. The Bengals, who have been yes. much improved, play Jacksonville yep. and turnover machine Trevor Lawrence. The Saints, who are a great defense, play the Giants and turnover machine Daniel Jones. Titans face the Jets and rookie quarterback uh, Zach Wilson. The Bears play Detroit. The Lions play Chicago. 
So both sides of that one could be all right. And the Dolphins take on Indianapolis and Carson Wentz. I would I would prioritize the Titans. The the Jets are just giving up not just sacks but interceptions. I would too. prioritize the Saints. They their okay. defense is awesome. Yeah. Uh did you uh find the Johnny Smith play yet? I have not. Oh, that's a shame. Quarterback time. Full stream ahead. All right, streaming quarterback candidates heading into week four. I'm going to go with the Monday night matchup and go with, wait a minute, I need to make sure I have this ready. Send in the car. <laughs> Send in the car. Hey, NBA Jam Rules. Uh, no, no, I'm just shaking my head. Of Derek Carr this is crazy. leads the league in passing yards in 20-plus yard passing plays. We saw Justin Herbert. He was great. I think this is a shootout on Monday night. Um only four quarterbacks have been quarterback ones all three weeks. Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, and Derek Carr. So I will You'll very in, in. trepidatiously step <laughs> into the flames and expect to be uh, pleasantly I, rewarded. I think that this is a week where all three of our picks are guys where you need to suck it up and say they've been good and stick with them. Uh, my pick is Kirk Cousins against Cleveland. I mentioned yesterday there is some worry about the ground game t soaking up so much clock for Cleveland and, and the ball control, but uh, Kirk Cousins has been great back-to-back -back quarterback six on the week finishes. Um, he's at home, which makes a big difference for me against Cleveland. In 2020, Cousins averaged 284 passing yards and 2.8 passing touchdowns per game and so far Cleveland's defense has allowed two top 10 quarterback uh weeks and then they got Justin Fields and said you don't play football Do you expect the uh the Vikings to implement the same Bears offensive strategies this week I I don't I don't think so yeah I don't think so I copycat think league isn't that what they tell Zimmer you Zimmer is a good head coach and I think you can stream Sam Darnold against the Dallas Cowboys. They've allowed the second most passing yards, the most twenty plus yard pass plays. This one That hurts me. That that Dallas has that, done that. Those stats hurt me because I think Dallas's defense has been one of the more surprising impressive like Washington's defense on the bad side, and then Dallas in the parts of the games where it mattered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Has been pretty good, but those stats say something else. See, it's it's a little scarier with Darnold that the offense came to a screeching halt for half the game after Christian McCaffrey left. I wish they were at they, home. They, yeah, they did get it going, but I think Darnold is is in play, and we we look we always give just the one, but I Taylor Heineke is in play against the Atlanta Falcons. Okay, QB won two weeks in a row. Look, you can't argue with the, with the Peyton Barber whisperer over there. Yeah, it's, with his look, it's gross. uncomfortable starts. <laughs> That should be a new segment. <laughs> Mike's uncomfortable starts. <laughs> and he just constantly, uh, we should make you sit on something very uncomfortable during the segment. Sure. All right. Um, those are the streaming quarterback options. And we want to thank Traeger Grills, of course. Uh, you heard the Where There's Smoke, of There's course. Fire segment. And uh, you can check out our draft party, our League of Record draft on YouTube. We had the privilege of having Traeger come out and cater that event. Uh, we are all huge proponents of the Traeger experience. In fact, Al Borland, maybe even more than everybody else, has been grilling like a madman on a regular basis. Grilling like smoking, a villain? Smoking like a Ooh. magman, like a chimney. Uh, all natural hardwood pellets that give you real wood-fired flavor in every bite. That's what you get. And they got the Wi-Fi technology, which is like a really nice play on words. Uh <laughs> And it's an incredible tech. Yeah, it lets you monitor all of your cooks, adjust grill temperatures, and uh, you do it all from your phone. So You, you can, can literally check the temperature of your meat from your couch. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, they don't have the te technology to move it off the grill into your mouth without. Uh, they're working on it. They are working on it. But uh, check it out. Go to Traeger.com slash footballers. And we'll be back with another show tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know what we have in store. That's up that's up to the judge. It's probably more bork chops. Oh, bork get the bork chops on the grill tonight. Good luck with your waiver selections. We will see you tomorrow, everybody. Goodbye. 
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. This episode was brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Visit omahasteaks.com. Keyword footballers save over 50% when you order the deluxe grill out assortment, plus get 12 free Omaha Steaks burgers and keep making memories with the ones you love. That's omahasteaks.com. Keyword footballers.